Well, we didn't get in this game to lose money. Because of the actions of you common folk, we lost billions of dollars. And yes, some very fair and honest corrupt moves prevented us from losing even more money, yet we still lost money. Do you even know how embarrassing it is to pull up and have your friends see you on a yacht instead of a super yacht? And here's the thing, we identify as having all the money. It's not greed, it's just who we truly are on the inside. And you common folk not allowing us to have all the money is malice towards who we are. So we're gonna need that apology while we wait for it. Just know I appreciate you tuning in to hear directly from us at Wall Street what happened with the GameStop controversy. And I sincerely hope you have a wonderful day living your trashy little life. From all of us here at Wall Street, God bless. Wow. Whoever thought there would be such an honest and genuine Wall Street guy. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Deskiv. We are Change.org. A lot of very important news to get into, especially with the flurry of activity surrounding federal authorities and their fight against the supposed insurrection, as it seems now they are activated more than ever when previously they were criticized for not doing much at all for very important cases. Also, the main story that we will be focusing on is the latest developments of something that we've been telling you was happening weeks ago, but now headline news on the Daily Mail that the Conholio sickness cases are declining in over 44 states. What's going on here? We're going to find out on this independent media organization. It's supported in part because I started to work with companies that I personally like, that I personally use, and one of them that I've been working with for a number of years now is safepreparedandready.com. They provide a lot of good stuff. I like them. They now ship in one to two business days, free shipping on orders over $99, and of course, you could always have a bag of rice and beans, but if you want some more premium tasty stuff that will last you over 25 years, this is the product for you. Click on the link down in the description below to find out more. Now, as brilliantly highlighted by Awaken with J.P. Spears, who, by the way, we played a short clip of his full video in the beginning of our broadcast. If you want to watch the full video, that link will also be in the description below. But as J.P. highlights, when the government's not obfuscating your wealth for the benefit of the billionaire class, they're usually trying to solve problems that they weren't part of creating. And now in Canada, we have the breaking news happening right now that the Canadian government officially listed the Proud Boys as a terrorist group. Yes, a very serious designation, which now joins the, quote, loosely organized Western chauvinistic group to be listed and treated along with other organizations like ISIS, as well as the Muhajin and Al-Qaeda. And like the Proud Boys or don't like the Proud Boys, I, I think it's fair to say that this is definitely it a stretch here, especially since I can't find any big reports of the Proud Boys doing anything of, of significant in, in Canada. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong and let me know down in the comment section below. Maybe I'm missing something here, but, but what did the Proud Boys ever do in Canada? Was there ever any attack? Was there ever any injuries? Was there any kind of action that, that hurts someone. I don't think so. I haven't seen it. And again, the implications are very serious here because now you could be labeled a terrorist because of political ideas. And to me, in my own personal opinion, that is a step too far, as of course, these actions are being praised by, of course, the establishment mainstream media that right now, with Donald Trump gone out of office, is losing massive viewership and it needs a boogeyman to go after to justify all the rage clicks, hate bait that they usually put out there. As of course, greatly demonstrated by the independent that is outraged that a judge in the United States actually allowed someone accused of a crime to go on a work trip in Mexico. Yes, an alleged capital rioter who has not been convicted, who has no criminal record, got permission for a judge to go on a work trip to Mexico, and uh, somehow this is the headline news on the independent like it actually matters or has some kind of effect in your personal life is absolutely ridiculous. Now, of course, it's important to call out violence. It's important to call out people doing 
actions that actually hurt other people, and we have always done that, no matter what the case here on this independent media channel. Others, though, selectively choose what violence they like and don't like, and of course, that's something that should always be called out for no matter what. And this latest obsession that the full extent of government agencies, their resources, and the law should be used against individuals that walked into a building is, uh, is again, ridiculous. The Independent continuing on with their coverage, even highlighting how, again, a lot of these people who weren't wearing masks weren't the best and brightest criminal minds, with some of the individuals literally even having their phone number on the back of their jackets. To think that these people are some kind of grave threat and criminal masterminds that need to be taken down immediately no matter what the consequences and ramifications to our civil liberties is a bit naive and absolutely disingenuous. Of course, federal agencies like the FBI will comply with the push for people asking them to have more power and authority over the citizenry as they just raided the home of two men whose crime, according to CNN, was organizing a rally. Yes, the FBI just conducted the raid of, of homes of individuals who organized a political rally. As of right now, neither of the men have been charged. We don't know the exact details of why this happened, but according to CNN, this was justified because of the rhetoric used by some of these protest organizers and the words that they said. Now, it's actually very interesting to see the FBI fully activated, fully mobilized, being extremely proactive and aggressive towards these alleged insurrectionists, some of whom literally have their phone number on the back of their jackets during the quote insurrection. But for close to 30 years, the FBI literally sat on their hands when it came to some of the worst atrocities committed by an individual that of course got away with it hurting thousands of children in indescribable ways during a child extortion and trafficking operation that that was something that the fbi looked past for about 30 years about 30 years ever since the 1990s the fbi knew about this man what he was doing and surprisingly they could, they could never get him, even though there was multiple witnesses, multiple victims, and just a slurry of evidence that was absolutely undeniable. The mainstream media right now that is cheering on this political prosecution was also, by the way, the same entity that was writing PR puff pieces about how great of a man Jeffrey Epstein was with his philanthropy in the scientific community. So yeah, I'm sorry, it's very hard to take whatever they say seriously, as of course they've been caught multiple times times just absolutely spreading fake news with no repercussions with no consequences at all only the promotion of them through the algorithms on platforms like youtube that of course make sure that you see them first before you see independent media that actually breaks down a lot of the bullcrap hypocrisy and lies that they spread without any consequences highlighted in one out of hundreds of thousands of examples here in the photo that I'm showing you of the New York Times, which, by the way, the New York Times is also calling for a reality czar to, quote, combat disinformation where big tech would meet the heads of government agencies to decide what people can and cannot say. Yes, the New York Times is literally calling for that right now. The institution that told us that there was weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and caused hundreds of thousands of civilian deaths along with the massive migrant crisis. And this is the institution that now is calling for a reality czar because the government doesn't have enough authority over you. Uh, again, I'm just flabbergasted at the goal that these individuals have. And I'm also flabbergasted with the latest news coming in that, of course, we talked about just a few weeks ago with Dr. Fauci even saying that the cases surrounding the conholio sickness were plateauing. By the way, we have to say conholio sickness because if we actually call it for what it is, we're going to get downranked in the algorithm, even though we're talking about mainline sources and showing how they contradict themselves. But now the most surprising news is coming in to the majority of Americans as they're learning that new infections have fallen 44% over the last three weeks. And even according to the experts, this is not because of the jab, since of course less than 8% of Americans actually got the jab. But yes, the numbers have started to go down over the last 
three weeks. Three weeks ago, by the way, was January 20th. The week, of course, that Joe Biden became president of the United States. And uh, this is... This is major news, as even reports of hospitalizations in some states have fallen nearly 30%. Currently in the United States, 44 states are seeing a decline in cases, with just Alabama, Louisiana, Montana, New Jersey, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania trending upwards. California cases are one-third of what they were a month before, and according to officials, this drop is because there could be a potentially higher number of people who actually had this sickness and didn't even know they did. Now, of course, to a lot of people online, the timing of this is very suspicious, and we have to understand that many times during this entire Conholio sickness saga, the medical experts have been wrong and contradicted themselves many times, just like we saw with Dr. Fauci telling you in the beginning of everything not to wear a mask. He then told you to wear a mask. Recently, he told you to wear two masks. Then he just came out a few days ago telling you that there's no data showing that two masks actually work. And there's even some professionals saying that double masking can even do more harm. How are we supposed to make sense of anything, especially when the experts don't know what's going on and contradict themselves? And most importantly, we still don't know the origin and patient zero of of what happened here mainly because of the larger cover-up that the Chinese government has been running here. This is why they've been arresting journalists, doctors who were warning the world that this was happening last year. But now, after being denied over three times, the World Health Organization is finally able to investigate what could be the origin of this all. And surprisingly, even after waiting an entire year, we are getting information that the World Health Organization is seeing data that no one has seen before, which shows the possibility that this sickness came from a laboratory. And again, this is important to note here. This is something that, that professionals, experts, doctors, and even some witnesses were saying last year, and they were banned for doing so on big tech social media. Specifically, Zero Hedge had their Twitter taken down for highlighting some circumstantial evidence, highlighting the possibilities of this, and for that, they were taken down. And now, one year later, the World Health Organization is saying that they saw data that suggests that, of course, this is a possibility. And it is. And it's important to understand where this came from, because if you understand the origin, if you understand patient zero, you're better off in not only dealing with this situation, but preventing it from happening ever again. And to me, the gain of function studies that were pioneered and pushed by Dr. Fauci, specifically in this Wuhan laboratory, specifically surrounding conholio sickness with bats, that the U.S. State Department even had diplomatic cables warning that there could be a virus coming out of because of the dangerous studies that they are doing and lack proper safety protocols that this could be a potential leak that could have happened. Now, again, of course, we don't know without a certainty of a doubt there is a lot of circumstantial evidence, and that's why I'm also surprised to learn about this latest information from the World Health Organization. Now, also, very interestingly, since the start of Biden's administration, we have seen many states loosen a lot of their very rigid lockdown restrictions, specifically with New York and Michigan, and now today we're getting information that New Jersey is lifting some of their restrictions as well, which has a lot of people asking, how political was this thing from the beginning? And I want to leave that question to you in the comment section to let me know what you personally think. Do the numbers going down after Joe Biden became president mean anything to you? Is it an accident? Is it a coincidence? What do you think is actually happening here right now? How do you make sense of it? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm always very humbled and interested from learning from you. As an independent journalist, I am fallible. I am as imperfect as you everyone is, but the best thing we could do is try to humble ourselves and learn from each other. I take this seriously because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you watching, sharing, engaging in this video, liking it, and also double clicking that link and sharing it with your friends, family members, strangers walking down the street. I don't know. I don't care who it is. Person you bump into the supermarket, the store clerk, you say, hey, you should see this video if you liked it, of course, on youtube.com forward slash we are change. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Stay tuned for more here on we are change dot org. Love ya.